Welcome to my next series of Five Minutes With. Uh, this week I'm here with Tim Taylor, Commercial Director of uh, Top Systems House Vika UK. Hello, Tim. Hi, Mark. Nice to see you. Nice to see you as well. Um, for those that don't know Tim, I, I recruited him 10 months ago now. You started with Vika. Um, Neil Evans, the MD, was promoted from Sales Director, uh, decided to take the opportunity to consolidate uh, his sales director and the marketing director roll into an all-encompassing commercial director. Um, with you being on, on board 10 months now, Tim, very interested to get your views on how you're settling in and uh, views on the industry. So, Yeah, thanks, Mark. Yeah, well, it's um, been a big change for me joining Vika. I really enjoyed the challenge. And as you said, you know, Neil's brought uh, me in to bring the team together, the whole of the commercial function. Um, and I guess if you look at the fenestration industry um, a new industry to me um, a real challenge it's, it's a fairly new industry in terms of the pvc market you know in the 80s and 90s massive boom massive opportunity lots of innovation but as we see now that the market is is more mature um, and uh, heavily led by the fabricators who make the windows and then the installers who um, obviously put those into consumers houses so um, you know, really important that we support those customers uh, and our product offering, the product quality and the customer service we give um, those fabricators has to be uh, has to be spot on. And, and that's the focus of the team at the moment. Yeah, I, I think you, you've hit on something very interesting there in terms of the innovation piece. Um, certainly the last three or four years walking around the fit show in particular, the fenestra fenestration industry exhibition. Talking to systems houses, it's very hard to differentiate around innovation. Effectively, a window is a window. How, how are you going about that, Vika? Yeah, well, it, in, in a couple of areas, really, Mark. Um, I guess yeah, th there's a pure product innovation that we've 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 seen in the past, uh, and, and Vika at the forefront of that. We've got some really exciting products that are not only coming out of of our site here in in Burnley, but also out of uh, Vika AG in Germany, where our, our parent company is. Um, and, and that's really exciting to see that, you know, over the next 12, 24 months, there'll be some new products to market. But more importantly, probably is our service innovation. Um, and as I touched on earlier, that it's really important to make sure that those customers are um, looked after. Um, and as time changes and those customers change, their needs change and how we need to interact with them um, and make sure that that, uh, that product supplied, you know, on time in full, OTIF as we call it. Um, every day, week in, week out. So uh, we, we have a relentless um, uh, cycle of, of, of trying to improve that for customers um, with more and more products and more and more different lines and different colours that we offer. Uh, it can become quite challenging at time yeah. to time, but uh, but making sure that that's there for our customers day in, day out is top of our, top of our priority. Certainly in terms of the repair maintenance improvement market over the last three years, given COVID, people investing and, and whatever else, the pressures that's put on supply chain, I'd imagine from an OTIF perspective, that's been a bit of a headache to try and keep up with that demand. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, we've seen um, in the past 24 months some real spikes in the in the market, you know, back in the times of COVID, um, people weren't going on holiday. They had some people fortunately had excess uh, cash uh, and they were able to look into their their homes and, and look at what they could do uh, and, and the market really took off. So it was a real challenge then. And at the same time, um, we had a real problem with supply of raw material. So raw material you know, went through the roof in terms of the cost, uh, but also availability. But we were we were really fortunate that, you know, we we were well uh, supported through our sister company, Vika Recycling at Wellingborough, who provide a, a recycled material that we managed to put into our products, um, not only from a sustainability point of view, is that really important, but security supply, um, which meant that at no point did we have to turn any of our production lines off here in Burnley. And, and we had, you know, first class OTIF levels right through the COVID pandemic, which we were really, really proud of. That is something to be proud of. Obviously, I specialise building products and talking to a lot of manufacturers out there, they did struggle throughout mm -hmm. COVID and they did have to stop lying. So yeah, yeah. there's a lot to be said for that. Um, yeah, and, and it's, it's not just it's just not the raw materials. I mean, the, the, the biggest part for me was the people, the attitude that people had. 
people were were both in certain and their personal lives, but also professional and business lives. But the team here um, really, really pulled the stops out. And I think that just goes down to the the, the way in which um, B can look after the people who work for them. And, and it was a real selling point of, of, of why I joined them. Um, mm. And some of the service that those individual have is, uh, you know, is quite exceptional. Um, so it was, you know, it, it was really valuable in, in those those dark days, shall we say, of the pandemic. Yeah, you've you've referenced your, your previous uh, sort of experience, and, and when taking the brief from Neil Evans, um, uh, in terms of the brief, probably thirteen months ago now, I was incredibly refreshed to sit down with Neil and understand right from this new position because the commercial director was new to to Vika before it was as I say sales director marketing director head of commercial um Neil said that as a company not precious on someone coming from building products there is a, a real stigma attached to this industry I've been in it for years about right we need someone that understands this market this product etc and I always try where possible to educate the client why why is that important fortunately with neil he got to the nub of this is what we want to improve change and and this person to lead um what what skills do you feel that you've brought on um from your your on trade skills as a sales director at mawson coles uh cause over to to vika and and how have you been been able to to take that on yeah so i, I guess but both organisations of manufacturing um, both deal with what I call an extended value chain. So you're supplying it to a customer who passes it on to another customer before it gets to the end consumer. And it's, it's a very technical product at the end of the day, even though you, know, you might think beer isn't. But the, the checks, quality checks on, on a beer are, are huge as they are on, on the window profile. But at the end of all that, it's the customer service that really wins through and both at Molson Coors and at Beaker, customer service was, was paramount. And I guess where I place my skill and my experience of the past 10, 15 years, yeah, I've worked in lots of sales and, and, and marketing roles, but it's about, for me, strategy execution. So it's about, you know, what we're we trying to achieve and making sure that we pass that through the organisation. We've got 400 people here at Burnley, all doing fantastic jobs. And, and, and my main responsibility is making sure that they're all facing in the same way or a similar way, day in, day out, and, and following the same objectives and trying to try, trying to hit the same goals. Um, so that's really important. And then lastly, um, Molson Coors was a huge sort of family environment. Uh, the people culture was massively important. It was a Canadian American family still still own the business. And, and similarly in Beaker, very much a family feel um, that the founders are still based and work in the organization out in Germany. And there is that real understanding and feeling that you put the people first, you look after the people and they'll deliver everything that you want for them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, interesting. I, mean, I, can, I can understand, I mean, obviously I interviewed you, I could understand the, the drive for the, the service offering and, and understanding what is the customer experience that, that came with that. And that was a big part of Neil's brief yeah. when, when taking your role. So yeah. very interesting to hear how that, that unfolds. Yeah. So, yeah, no good stuff. And, and, and what does true customer excellence mean to you, both previously and now that you've you've sort of bedded in at Vika? Yeah, well, I, I think it all starts with with listening uh, and listening to the customer. So before I start to make any changes here, I spent a lot of time with my team, just listening, trying understanding uh, what, what their challenges were, and then similarly talking to customers, and not only our customers, the fabricators, but the end customer, the installer. So how do we make it easier for everybody in that chain? So constantly yeah. listening and gaining feedback is really important. And we put in step and, and put in place a number of feedback mechanisms. But then on the back of it, allowing people to continually improve and make those changes, to those processes so that we don't make the same mistakes time and again. I don't mind if people make mistakes, but let's not make them time and again. Let's constantly improve and learn from that. Um, and then overall, trying to create that customer centric culture where people are constantly thinking not about how it impacts me, how it impacts on the, 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 the operation, the supply chain, but you know, what's this doing for the customer? And, yeah. and as I explained, back in the times of COVID, that was you know, paramount at the front of their minds. 
But now as we move forward into maybe a bit more uncertain certain times again with recessions and you know inflation, all the all the daily challenges that we see coming through, you know, you've got to help people get through that and say, look, you know, we, we can be better, we can move this on to the next level. So, you know, we've got a number of improvement initiatives that we're currently running at Burnley. Um, and, and we we just want to strive to make that better um, day in day out. I'm I'm intrigued, but clearly my background's not the brewing industry. Uh, I'm intrigued how open customers were that you used to work with at Molson Coors compared to fabricators. Now fa fabricators are renowned as being quite outspoken when they want to be. How, how have you found that transition in terms of gaining an understanding where where do Vika sit with customers currently? What's the market perception? Yeah, so I think um, I think if you look at um, the, the the alcohol business and the, the trade I used to be in, you know, you get quite a few people who uh, own pub companies and, and and own outlets themselves. That they, they were very, you know, they were very challenging in their views about okay. what worked and what didn't work. So I'm quite used to uh, some frank and open feedback about your products and service. Uh, and similarly with our fabricators, you know, they are. Um, you know, but very pleased to come forward to, to offer, you know, solutions or suggestions about how we can improve. And it's about trying to take those those insights and feedback and, and thread those through the various processes we've got here around, you know, like I said, process, service, product innovation to make sure that we can change that that quickly. Now, the, one of the big changes or the big uh, differences I've noticed, obviously, you know, getting a a, a beer to market could be quite could be quite quick. You know, the innovation cycle, you know, could be several months in the fenestration industry. You know, bringing a new product, a new yeah. system to market yeah. can take months, if not years. Um, and, and certainly, you know, that innovation, you have to get that right because there's not a second chance. So you've got to make sure that when you bring that to market, it, it, it is fit for purpose and it, mm. and it meets the uh, meets the needs because the the infrastructure, the investment that's put down at an early stage for uh, in, for, for an in, a new and innovative product is, is huge. So um, I would say the innovation cycles are, are massively different, but yeah, both come with with challenges and opportunities. That's interesting, though, isn't it? I think as an industry, um, window systems, you only have to look around you, your street, your close. People want different designs. Want different styles of windows compared to even 15 20 years ago so yeah and I, I think that's a that's a huge opportunity for the industry I, I still think um people in general consumers in general um think about new windows and think about the 80s and 90s the sort of shiny white windows and and as you move into the industry you notice there's several different systems different types of windows with vertical sliders flush sash casement windows you know all the different options around glazing and then on top of that the different um colors you now can have through the lamination of the the the, the, the pvc really the the, the options are, are endless and yeah. getting customers and consumers to realize that and see that it is it is important now that throws huge complexities both into our organisation, into into fabricators and into installers. But that's the need of the consumer and the consumer will change. The consumer habits will change and we need to keep up with that. We need to find a way in which we can supply that, because if we don't, then uh, we, we, we're not meeting their needs. Yeah. Well, it's interesting times. It's, um, you know, moving forward for Vika as in any systems house, it's it's a great time of change, of looking for innovation, improvements in manufacturing, getting the product out, keeping costs down and everything else. And well, well, we'll see where the next 12 months come. Certainly interesting times for Vika. Yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a challenge um, for everybody, I think, the next few months. Um, but I, I'm, I'm certain that, you know, if you've got the right people, the right processes, and, and you've got those relationships, and you're flexible enough to listen and flexible enough to to make those changes um you can certainly succeed so um i'm looking forward to it i'm looking forward to the challenge and uh thank you very much for introducing me to uh, the industry and to vika yeah. oh, pleasure working with you tim thank you for your time pleasure take care bye-bye